Hey everyone, it's Adele and April from Just Say Scrap and we are here with Technique Tuesday. So today we are going to be showing you how to make um, a pinwheel or a pinwheel-esque kind of thing um, out of paper. We're so super we're excited about this. We used it over our weekend this past weekend and everybody loved it. So we figured mm -hmm. we'd share it with you as well. All right, so we are going to get started today. So today's technique is pretty simple. Um, I just have my cutter basically, some white daisy paper. Um, and actually, mom and I have started this new thing where we have specific blades for certain things. So I have a white daisy blade specifically. So I'm just going to change that out on my cutter here. Um, we do this because the white daisy is a much thicker paper and it tends to make your blade duller quicker. Um, so we try to just change it out to a white daisy blade just so our, our blade doesn't dull as quickly. So today we are actually going to be making some paper pinwheels that can be used on your projects. And I'm gonna be doing an inch one first. So all I need to do is I need to cut two um, one inch strips on my cutter. And I actually like using the right side of my cutter when cutting anything that's one and a quarter inches or less because I have a better grip with it against this side. So we have those two pieces. Now this piece is extra. As you saw, I was using an extra piece of paper anyway. And now I have to change out my blade to be a score blade. So I'm gonna take my um, white daisy one and put it off to the side. And we're gonna use a score blade here. All right, so as you see, I moved the um, camera much closer for this, but we are actually going to end up scoring this multiple times and it's gonna go actually very far across um, the paper here. But to start off, um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about scoring on this Fiskars rail cut blade, um, especially this one. We have found that if you are scoring, you have to be a little bit off. It might sound weird, but it's true. Um, so let me show you an example. Let me get a scrap piece of paper here. All right. So I have a scrap piece of paper here and I want to fold this in half perfectly, right? So if I go to the six inch mark and score it, it's not gonna work. Actually, let me show you something. I'm gonna do two different ones. Okay. So I cut that at six inches. So I have two pieces, two six inch pieces here. If I wanna score this and make it into a three by three card, which is what I have now, I'm gonna take it at three inches, right? This is what you would think. You take it at three inches, score it upward. Remember you fold towards the wrong side. But do you see how that's off? Do you see how it's about a 16th of an inch off? That's gonna happen every single time that you score on the cut rail blade. To make that not happen, you're gonna have to come to the three inches, move it a 16th of an inch up, score it, and then when you fold it, you're gonna get a perfect fold every time. So for some reason, the way that the cutter works is you have to move it a 16th of an inch up, otherwise it's not gonna be a perfect fold. Now, for this, it gets a little bit confusing. We're gonna be making this right now. For this, I found, and I don't know why this works, if I bring it to the half an inch, because we're gonna be scoring it at half inch um, intervals, but you gotta flip it every half inch. If I bring it to the half inch and I move it down, a 16th of an inch. For some reason it works. Um, that's what I've been doing. No, I, cause I tried I, for some reason I tried it at a 16th of an inch up. It didn't work. So I'm going to take it at my half inch, bring it a 16th of an inch down. I don't know if I was doing something wrong the first time, but bringing it a 16th of an inch down works for me perfectly every time. So I did that. Now, instead of going to the one inch and moving it a 16th down, I'm actually going to go to the one and a half inch, move it 16th, a 16th down. And I'm gonna do that the entire time. So I'm gonna be moving it over an inch at a time. And the reason I'm doing this is because you'll see on the way back, we're actually going to flip it over and score the reverse way. All right, so we have that done there. Now I'm gonna flip it over and I am gonna take it to the 12 inch and move it that 16th down and then score on this side. I'm gonna get like a super tiny little thing, but we're still gonna do it. And then you start moving it down. I flipped that paper over, and now I'm doing it at the inch marks with a si minus a 16th. And as you see, we're gonna get all of the score lines opposite of each other, a half an inch apart. 
So when you're also using your score blade, just you want to put some pressure on it because you want to actually get that score line, but you don't want to put too much pressure on it where it rips through it. Um, that would not be a good thing. So you just want to give it enough pressure that you're going to get those crisp lines. All right, perfect. So now we have to do this to the other sheet. But do you see how that's really cool? It's actually a really nice design. Um, I've used things like this on paper. We have done this technique before where you kind of just use your score blade to make designs in paper and it actually looks really cool. But I'm now gonna do this quickly on the second piece and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you what to do next. All right, so now we've got both of our pieces here that are done. And we're basically going to um, just do something really simple. We're gonna just fold them up um, and then make our pinwheel. So I'm just gonna start, remember, against that bump. So you wanna just fold it back and forth um, and literally just go through the whole thing. This is going to be a little bit thicker for a scrapbook page. It's gonna be an inch thick, but if you don't mind that, great. Um, we actually did this over our last weekend on a page and I can show you what the page looks like with doing this technique with a quarter inch. It takes a little bit longer, but it totally works. Um, so I will show you what I mean. And it's also a lot thinner for when you're doing your scrapbook pages. If you don't like thick scrapbooking pages, um, that would be the way to go. It does take a little bit longer and it's hard. It's, I will tell you, it's a lot harder to fold with white daisy because white daisy is so thick. Um, but we actually had somebody on our weekend just use one of our regular cardstocks and said it was a lot easier. So you now see that that is folded like that. Now this is the little bit more difficult part that we have to um, do. So I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of paper here, literally just a scrap piece of white daisy. And I'm going to take my scissor my here and making sure my arm actually stays up. I'm just going to cut a circle. Doesn't have to be too big. You just need like a semi-circle shape. So what I'm gonna do first is that little half an inch that I had you score, I'm just gonna chop that off on either end. Um, it's just the excess, so we just wanna make sure that we cut that off, cut it off on this end, and then we'll be good to go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some liquid glass, because liquid glass is gonna be your best friend here. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of liquid glass on this end. And these two are going to actually interfold into each other just like that. See how I just kind of put those together? So it's basically gonna make a continuation of that fold, but connecting our two pieces together. And just hold it for a few seconds just to make sure that it stays. And then we have to connect the circle. So we're gonna do the same thing here. So just make sure that those two line up. Put a little bit of liquid glass on the inside here. Close that up. And then just stick that together. And as this is kind of holding, got a little bit of liquid glass on the excess. Um, if you don't like touching liquid glass, um, with your fingers you can use like a paper towel or something i don't mind it it does make your fingers feel a little weird um just because it is super sticky it's kind of like a gorilla glue or something like that so just be aware if you do touch the liquid glass that might happen but before we do this i'm also going to get out a few of my acrylic blocks so i'm taking the big one i'm taking the four by five one and also a few three by threes just because they're heavier and i'm going to now Put a circle of liquid glass on here. Sometimes this is easier if you have like a pair of hands helping you, another, an extra hair, pair of hands helping you, but I promise you can do it by yourself. So we're gonna do that. Then what I'm gonna do is these are sticking together. Sometimes I'll let them sit for a little bit longer. I basically have to push these all together onto their side like this. And this is the only part that's a little bit more tricky because you have to kind of get them to all cooperate and turn on you. And if you let it go, it will spring open. Um, see, like if I let it go, see how it starts to just do that? So you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that you're holding one end as you're going. And this is why I said you do wanna make sure that it is glued fully um, because then they will pop apart and then it won't be fun. You can make half circles and stuff like that. But because this one is so much smaller too, I'm actually able to pick it up 
and I'm able to go right over that circle. And this is why I'm working on an all-purpose mat here. Um, because if for some reason any of my extra liquid glass gets around the edges or onto my all-purpose mat, it'll wipe right up when I'm done. And then I'm just gonna open my liquid glass and I'm gonna just stick a little bit in the center there so it kind of grabs um, those edges a little bit more. And now this is the little bit of a tricky part that we've got. I have to transfer these blocks onto it while having it keep its shape. If it opens up a little bit, that's totally fine because usually I will actually end up putting like a gem or something inside of it. Sometimes I won't. Um, but basically when I wanna just make sure that there is weight on there like that, so it will stay in its circle. Um, and the reason I'm putting so many on and using actually the acrylic blocks is because you can see right through here. So you can see if you actually have it grabbed and then once it dries, it will be like this. So that is our super, super simple technique. And I just wanna show you a few of the pages that we use this on. So I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. So here's one example where we only use the half of a pennant or a pinwheel, whatever you wanna call them. We use them on those two sides of our pages. And then we use a big one right in the middle of our page here. So this is where we use the quarter of an inch. It is much thinner. Um, easier to use and we use just some shimmer brush gold shimmer brush to kind of splatter on top of that but super super simple technique it does take a little bit of time and patience um, but it looks great and you really can do it with any cardstock and all you really need is paper a trimmer and a little bit of liquid glass and then something heavy to kind of put on top of it but it really spruces up pages or cards or anything like that they're super cute so all right there you have it and this is our paper pinwheel. Isn't it so cute? It's super easy to make, um, really easy. We have so many, there's so many different things that you can do with it. Um, you saw all the different examples that we have, but they're super cute, super easy to make. You can make them obviously all, oops, that's the backing, huh? <laughs> you already saw that. Uh, you can see all the different sizes that you can make with them. Mm -hmm. So super, super cute, love it. But yeah, that is our technique. And it's perfect for the upcoming holiday, 4th of July, woohoo. Woohoo, for the July. Woo <laughs> so, um, all right, we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye. Oh, God. Fluffinetta. Fluffinetta? Oh, look, she's got a tree on her. She's as fluffy as the tree. <laughs> you literally star. cover the tree. I have a star on the top of my head. Oh. <laughs> And now I've got to change out my glade, my glade, my cutter, more of my cutter. Um, I will show you obviously, or 